Your book includes a story about a night your dad came home and he joined you and a group of friends in a poker game. It was a Friday night and he sat down with you all. Can you share that story with us? Yeah. My father loved action, usually revolving around money. At work, he talked to his broker half a dozen times a day, interrupting a dress fitting or a meeting to find out how his stocks were doing. Once, when I was around 12, he came home on a Friday night just as my friends and I were in the middle of a poker game. The betting stakes were two and four pennies. My father sat down with us, joined the game, and bet the maximum on every hand. Within half an hour, he had cleaned everyone out. He gave us back all the money and added an extra five dollars. Then, getting up, he said, you still can't beat the old man, and went to bed. When my father went to the racetrack, he bet on long shots, often several in the same race. He'd sit at a table in the clubhouse having a sandwich and coffee with friends and getting tips from racing sheets and from acquaintances, someone who knew someone who knew someone who had heard from the vet which horses were healthy. At the last minute, right before the bell sounded, he'd place his bets, often adding an extra horse or two on a hunch. He got to know the ticket sellers and tipped them regularly, so he was able to arrange with some of them not to record his ticket number when he won big, thus avoiding some taxes. He gave large amounts to charity because he understood what it was like to be poor, but also because he liked the attention and praise he drew. Often the honoree at dinners to aid causes for which he'd raised money, he was critical of other businessmen who didn't feel the obligation to give back. In the 70s, my father became known in the dress business as the Ultra Suede King. Ultra Suede was a synthetic fabric that looked like suede but could be cleaned in a washing machine. It was a time when air conditioning was starting to be used widely, and women, particularly in the South, needed to cover their shoulders all year round. The company that made Ultra Suede rationed out a strict amount to its customers every month to keep the demand for it high. Everything my father produced in Ultra Suede flew out of the stores, and it drove him crazy that he couldn't obtain more. Finally, he began buying the fabric from other manufacturers who weren't as successful with it as he was. He paid them a premium, of course, so they could make a profit. But that gave him enough to fill orders from stores like Neiman Marcus, which kept begging for more of his Ultra Suede outfits. My father could never get enough Ultra Suede. It was like eating caviar, he said. As he grew more successful, he started going to four-star restaurants like Le Cirque. When I ate with him there, he insisted on betting each time on how many lumps of sugar were in the bowl on our table. He'd tell me to guess first, and then he'd say a number. Invariably, he won. It took me a year or two before I realized that the head waiter always whispered the amount to him beforehand. My father liked to bet on a sure thing. Once, when he was in his early 90s, we drove up 8th Avenue and passed the building on 38th Street where he'd been a dress contractor, begging for work from manufacturers. I wasted 20 years of my life there, he said, pointing to the building. He had waited a long time to reach the limelight, and once he got there, he made sure to bask in it. Thank you.